All right. Um, welcome back to Diesel Talk. My name is Tony Salas. Uh, the subject for today is after treatment, but we're going to focus only on the first stop. In other words, in 2007 and a half, roughly on most model year diesel trucks and cars, we saw the use of the diesel oxidation catalyst and diesel particulate filter. After treatment will also include selective catalyst reduction or SCR, but in this diesel talk, we're going to focus on just the diesel oxidation catalyst and diesel particulate filter. A quickie here of information regarding the diesel oxidation diesel particulate filter. Here we can see a 2017 setup on a Ram Cummins uh, 6.7. And, uh, you know, you look at all these components, like I just said, the diesel oxidation catalyst, the diesel particulate filter, EPF, and also the SCR, that it's amazing the cost involved in all these setups along with the sensors that you are using, not to mention the doser units and also the doser itself. I mean, it, I could go on a list, but the point is, it doesn't make sense if you don't understand the system because, you know, you won't be able to diagnose. You, you can replace or clean DOC DPF, but if you have a chronic problem with the truck, it could be uh, engine related. In other words, like the slide says right here, is how well is the engine running? How well is the engine running? Is the engine running at optimum levels? Because let me tell you, if and if, don't even continue watching this video if you're not going to get this. The, the bottom line is that engine needs to be running at optimum levels. If we have low compression, we got injectors leaking, we got turbo issues, we got excessive, and I mean excessive, uh, blow by gases. You know, we're going to have a problem. We're burning oil. You know, it just doesn't make sense. So. Uh, the key thing is, yeah, how well is the engine running? Are we maintaining the fuel system, the common rail fuel system? Are we maintaining the engine itself? Where I've been fighting this fight about changing up the engine oil change intervals. Got to change those up, and I'll do another segment of diesel talk on that. But engine oil needs to be changed. I mean, I know the manufacturers are calling for 10,000 mile oil change. No, uh -uh. no, 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 no. We're talking more like three to 5,000 oil change intervals because with variable vane turbochargers um, constipating and we're congesting these poor engines. I mean, it just is ridiculous. So the first thing you got to keep in mind is how well that engine is running. So here's a quick first tip right off the bat. I've been teaching this for a long time. Simply disconnect the upper <clears throat> or the lower, depending what kind of design we have, but we want to disconnect the flange. In this case, I got one here. We can disconnect the flange on the inlet of the DOC DPF assembly. Let's just connect it. Let's see what's going on. What's happening there? Because you want to run this engine uncorked in order to find out, do you have blue smoke? Do you have white smoke? Do you have any kind of smoke coming out that's prematurely clogging up your whole system here, your after treatment system? So uh, we like to uncork them. It's not that hard. It takes a few minutes. We're talking about maybe 15 minutes tops. And what you're simply doing is you're just allowing that engine to breathe and give you an idea what this engine is hiding and what the the after treatment might be hiding, you know, that's what you're looking at. So the thing is you have to have an understanding what regeneration is. What is regeneration? And if you don't know, make a note of it, memorize it, know it. Regeneration is defined as the process of burning soot. You're burning soot. Okay, that's what we're trying to do. We collect it, we trap it, and then we need to burn it off and turn it into ash. So does a DPF, diesel particulate filter, have a life? Yes. It has that life is no more <laughs> in other words there's not a mileage i take that back in other words when it becomes ash loaded so we want to run that ck4 now ck uh what do we got ck we have the cj then now we have, we have ck4 oil in this case that low ash oil that you're running in these engines nowadays so engine oil is taking a change we're seeing the not so much use uh, some trucks still using 15w40 but we see like the power stroke six sevens using 1030 and now we have a new fa designation too so that's that'll be another infomercial there we'll do later on on diesel talk but the <coughs> excuse me the bottom line see i get all choked up about it bottom line is you know you got to understand what regeneration is what is regeneration and in this case, regeneration is, again, the process of burning soup. But there are three types of regeneration like the slide shows. We have passive, we got active, and we got manual. Okay, we got manual regeneration, which you do with the scan tool. Passive means that we're generating enough heat in that exhaust. That engine is loaded, that it's always loaded, that it's generating so much heat that it can burn off the suit on its own. You know, if it's active, active means that 
we're running post injections or we have like Duramax is have they have a dedicated injector <clears throat> to actually they have a dedicated injector that actually squirts fuel into the exhaust so quickie we have our diesel oxidation catalyst right here now what is the purpose of the DC DOC is to oxidize yes but that's not its main job the reason why it's put in there is to actually provide an exothermic reaction to release heat you see, in order to regen in the diesel particulate filter, we have to reach temperatures over 980 degrees plus, we'll round it off to 1,000 degrees Fahrenheit. So the thing is, the diesel oxidation catalyst is designed to work with fuel. It kind of breaks the rules of gasoline, where if we run a rich mixture in a gasoline towards a catalytic converter, it can overheat and get cherry hot, yeah, and create that rotten egg smell on those uh, gasoline-powered vehicles. Well, here, we're doing it on purpose. Yeah, the DOC right here, we have fuel coming downstream either by a dedicated injector or by post injections in the cylinder where we're pushing the exhaust stroke fuel out. Yes, we're injecting fuel into the exhaust. Yeah, it's unbelievable, fuel in the exhaust. But anyways, that's another story. Thing is, we got fuel coming downstream towards the diesel oxidation catalyst right there. Okay, now that will create a chemical reaction. And that chemical reaction in the DOC right here is going to go ahead and generate a horrendous amount of heat that will, again, go towards the diesel particulate filter and get it nice and hot and ready for regenerations or burning the soot. Remember the definition of regeneration? Process of what? Burning the soot. Say it. Okay, don't be afraid. It's okay. You're among friends, man. Say it. You know, burn, process burning soot. Yeah, we're burning the soot. That's what we're trying to do. So what do we need to create a regenerator? We need heat. That's the whole game. So as I've been teaching for years, you know, regeneration, the design they've done in these early trucks was the fact that we're just losing heat. There was not much for insulation to the point that we actually have run header wrap, you know, for headers, racing headers. We use header wrap to wrap these exhaust pipes to help retain that heat because that's what we need. We need heat. That's why the new 20, what is it, 2019, 2020 trucks, you're going to see a lot of diesels, even the new half ton stuff. Well, we're putting the DOC, DPF all up towards the engine compartment because we're losing so much heat downstream. Anyways, we got a lot of trucks that are set up like this one here on the display. So <clears throat> let's review. If you need to run a regeneration, that DOC needs fuel. Bottom line, needs fuel, diesel fuel. It chemically reacts and generates a hellacious amount of heat, which will exceed into the DPF over 900 degrees to actually, like I said, almost 1,000 degrees we round it up to, to create a regeneration event. And that's important to understand. But here's the deal. We have had diesel oxidation catalysts get carbon fouled. What do I mean by that? It's not the greatest picture in the world, but it's the best I can do, but it kind of shows you can't see the honeycomb design in the diesel oxidation catalyst, but you can see the carbon wall that's formed on it. Now, I got to tell you, when you see carbon, it's like a quenching effect. And that quenching effect means that uh, it's been, it's condensing itself. Let me, let me rephrase. It's condensing itself to the form that it solidifies. So those carbon, uh, you know, that uh, gaseous state, that uh, carbon is pretty much condensing itself on the walls of that diesel oxidation catalyst. So where's that carbon at, in case you don't understand? That carbon is on the inlet of the diesel oxidation catalyst. So it forms a what? It forms a barrier. And that barrier won't allow any kind of regeneration to take place. But for that carbon to form, it kind of tells you how cold that engine's been running. This is another reason why we tell you to uncork the exhaust, because it gives you, again, the opportunity to run the engine and see if you got any smoke, but also get a camera or a flashlight, depending on the angle you can reach into there, and look inside the inlet of the diesel particulate filter. Because if this is going on right now, guess what? Game's over, we gotta get it, send it out to be cleaned. It doesn't mean replacement, it just means most likely it needs to be cleaned. So be aware of that. Anyways, the point is <clears throat> you gotta learn to monitor your condition of your diesel particulate filter because you want to know what's going on. I came up with a new thing when it comes to diesel particulate filter. We've had two already happen to us. I call it a runaway condition. Now, most software on most of these trucks will shut down. A regeneration. For example, I was doing not too long ago a regeneration on a par stroke 6.4. Usually it takes about close to an hour for it to run the regen. 
Well, I set up the region. I went inside real quickly of the office to get a cup of coffee. I came back. The RPM was back low again because when you are running a regeneration, the, the RPM will elevate. You know, you'll see it running a little bit higher. But the thing is, what we found was is that um, the RPM went back down, which is telling me that the system kicked out of regeneration. So it tells me, why did it kick out? Why wasn't the RPM elevator running regeneration? Well, it's because it was probably running too hot. Now you're gonna see we have a pre, get my mouse over here, my pre and my post temperature sensors, exhaust gas temperatures. Now we're watching before and after. So temperature will be higher, like the slide says, will be higher after DPF if there is soot or related material that will burn. Burning will create a higher temperature. It's like, the, think about the soot that's inside the DPF like you're trying to start a fire. And once the fire gets going, it starts getting hotter. So therefore, should the temperature be hotter after the DPF? And the answer is yes. You wanna see a higher temperature if it's burning the soot. Here's the problem. We have had situations, like I just told you the story, where I ran to go get a cup of coffee that the temperatures can get hot really fast. Well, before I even continue, please note, do non-approved or not cat friendly additives cause a problem? What I mean by that is, you know, sulfur. Every time I look at uh, fuel additives or we see octane improvers, you know, those octane improvers uh, will actually, not octane, what am I doing? Cetane. So in this case, when we see cetane, I'm not octane. See, I'm taking gasoline. Sorry, Ain't stop. In this case, yeah, when we see cetane improvers, we actually have seen problems with the fact that they use high sulfur and sulfur is a big no-no. That's why we got ultra low sulfur fuel. You know, ultra low sulfur fuel, again, low sulfur. So when you put an added with high sulfur, that creates a little bit of a problem, especially with cats. Here's the point. Are there oil additives or fuel additives that actually will poison a DPF along with a DOC? The answer is yes. So you need to have a little talk with your customer or whoever is using the vehicle on what kind of additives are running. Because if I see, for example, I run a regeneration, I see a bunch of brownish, blackish smoke that's a big telltale that something's wrong terribly, either additives or something's going down that downpipe into the DOC. Okay, but we're trying to look at what's going on afterwards. So once a regeneration is completed, like it says on the last line, RPM will drop, but if temperature variance after DPF is higher than the pre-DPF sensor, pseudo accumulation is still present or other chemicals. So what do I mean by a runaway? Well, we were doing a region on this truck, and in this case, as we're running the region, what happened was we could see the temperatures rise. But even after the RPM, the computer acknowledged that it was running too hot, it kicked the RPM down, it kicked out the uh, regeneration event. We're still running the truck and we're, you know, we went back into the data pits and we're looking at the exhaust gas temps and the temperatures are climbing, 1100, 1200. 1300. It got to the point I grabbed all the guys and everybody had a fire extinguisher in hand because we literally had this thing running away from us in terms of temperature. Once it hit 1800 degrees, the differential pressure sensor popped off. I mean, and then it started cooling down. But let me tell you, it filled up a good set of fruit and looms real quick because this thing was running away with temperatures and it could have caused a fire. But, uh, you know, I couldn't, we couldn't do nothing about it. We didn't know whether to turn off the engine or run the engine. You know, would it help to aid the engine? I mean, we didn't know. I mean, I'll be honest. But the bottom line is it just ran away. So once it all cooled down hours later, if not the next day over, and we took that DPF DOC off, it was incredible the junk that we found inside of that DPF. So as we continue the diesel talk tip, here is a, a Duramax where I was doing a, I believe this was an LMM. And in this case, um, you can see that we look at data, we can see the temperatures, but just take a look at the temperatures. Here we can see that this vehicle already has a calculated mass of six grams, which ain't much. Anything 30 or over is a red flag for me to justify the regeneration, which brings up a sidebar point here. Quick tip, if the vehicle's coming in for any kind of oil change or A service or B service, isn't that a good time to maybe before you start the AB service, run a regeneration because you can burn some of that soot off for the customer or your or your fleet vehicle you know let's burn it off you know and then we'll do the old change afterwards that's a good idea because you don't want to do it over the road you want to do it straight up right there right now because let's face it, is the vehicle always running at a road at a given speed for a prolonged amount of time maybe maybe not bottom line 
It's a good idea. Anyways, let's take a look at some scenarios here. We're running a regeneration here. Uh, I'm going to move my mouse over here. Uh, you can see that the command we're do we are actually running a successful regeneration so far. It had over 83 grams of calculated suit in the DPF. Okay, you can see the temperature before and after. <clears throat> We see 1112 degrees and then we see 1227 after. So we're burning something, it's higher after. It continues to burn. And as we continue to burn, we could see the temperature from 1139 Fahrenheit to 1270. So it's still hotter after it, but let's also pay attention to the differential pressure. Look at the pressure starting to drop as we are burning the soot. So we go from 3.4 to 2.7. So as we continue, and the you know we're starting we're starting to see those grams drop. Again, we see 1139, 1278 still hot. We see the pressure dropping. Till finally, after a while, we're down to nine grams, and the temperature still high. So that means I'm still burning something, still hotter. And in this case, it's 1.5 psi. So the pressure's dropping across the DPF, telling me that it's cleaning it up opening up those passages, turning that suit into ash. So in this case, this is a good thing we see happening. So we saw the grams drop on their own. All this happened on their own. So the moral of the story is how do I know I did a successful regeneration is if you can and your scan tool allows it like it does on a GM product here, some other products do too. Take a look at the inlet and the outlet temperatures, but also pay attention to the differential pressure as it drops. Quick note, how do I know <clears throat> if the deferential pressure is too high? Average is no more than two PSI. We don't wanna see no more than two PSI. And when you check that, don't just check it at idle. Snap the throttle to kick it up to 3000 RPM and see what that pressure rises to. If it goes over two PSI, <clears throat> excuse me, if it goes over two PSI, then that's a red flag that you need to run a region. Now, last but not least, in the past, when we were first starting back in 08, 09, dealing with these trucks, um, we always thought, okay, we didn't burn all of it. It's still showing a lot of grams, a lot of pressure. We would run regenerations over and over. In other words, one truck would get as much as three sessions of regeneration. That was stupid. Bottom line is after one, if it's still loaded, then it most likely you're not going to clean it. It's very unlikely. It could be, but it's very highly unlikely. My recommendation at that point is send, remove it and send it out to be cleaned. It probably needs to be done. So please pay attention to that. Uh, very important. Because, you know, you could do regens to your blue in the face and you're just hurting the motor more because you're running regeneration. So with that said, uncork the exhaust, check a look at those temperatures, and uh, hopefully you'll have a successful regeneration because the next stage of after treatment involves the SER. And that's going to be affected too because we need heat as well. So with that said, you know, <clears throat> Uh, feel free to review this video, and uh, hopefully you've learned a little bit about DOC and DPF. With that said, you know, we appreciate you watching, and until next time.